Question number two, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. What concerns, if any, has Treasury expressed about the budget proposal to give the Pacific Economic Development Agency $4.8 million, as announced by the Honourable Georgina Tehuhu on the 20th of May 2010? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, none that I'm aware of, no money has been handed over and Treasury uh, are engaged in a process uh, focused on seeking value for money. They are assisting the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs to negotiate a suitable purchase agreement uh, for providing assist job assistance and training opportunities for young Pacific people. Uh, they will ensure there are clear deliverables, sound performance measures, sound accountability arrangements and no duplication of existing funding or programmes, a process followed uh, with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of grants within government. One way or another, the government is determined to use this small amount of new funding to assist probably the group who have been hardest hit by the recession, and that is young Pacific Island youth with no skills and no jobs. And we believe it's important that the government takes action in order to make a difference. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Supp supplementary question, Mr Speaker. In making the decision to allocate that money to the Pacific Economic Development Agency uh, in the budget, uh, did he take account of the report in March from the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs that warned explicitly that this posed significant risks to the government, that the agency, quote, was untested and unproven, end quote, that it had, quote, not delivered on any projects of any note, end quote, and, quote, did not have a good record of working with other agencies, end quote. If so, why did he go ahead with the proposal? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that kind of advice is uh, not unusual when... <laughs> well, it isn't. It isn't unusual when, when officials are appraising new budget proposals. As I have said, there will be, there is going, there is now a, dis, a negotiation going on regarding the contracting arrangements. I might say the proposals have a uh, very clear track record, and that is they came from a conference which I believe that government convened uh, for Pacific and economic for the economic and social transformation of Pacific Islanders, uh, which produced a detailed document in September 2008. And it is, um, the propositions come from that document. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Question, Mr Speaker. Order. Supp supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Who decided that the Pacific Economic Development Agency was not required to report under the standard reporting requirements set out under Section 32A of the Public Finance Act. Honourable Billing. Well, Mr Speaker, that's a ridiculous question because no money has been handed out. The Pacific Economic... The Pacific... The, um, the agency concerned is in discussions with the Treasury and the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs, and I would have thought that the Labor Party would be pleased that the government is paying attention to the plight of young Pacific people and that it is determined to take action to improve their prospects. Uh, the Mr Speaker, of the supplementary question. Mr Speaker, why did he tell the New Zealand Herald that Mrs Tehuhu, quote, went too far, end quote, in stating that the money was for the Pacific Economic Development Agency and that the money referred to was a general allocation for Pacific development when the budget document states specifically and explicitly that this money is money allocated to the Pacific Economic Development Agency. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, first of all, I didn't speak to the New Zealand Herald, but I might tell the, I advise the member two things. One is that it's actually described in a number of different ways in the budget documentation. And secondly, no money goes out until a satisfactory contract is negotiated. And I would have thought that the Labor Party would be pleased the government is taking action to help 
probably New Zealand's most disadvantaged group, and that is young, unskilled Pacific Islanders with no jobs. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable order. Mr. Speaker. Order. I seek point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, I seek leave of the House to table the summary of service providers for non-departmental outputs that state explicitly that the Pacific Islands Business Develop uh, the Pacific Economic Development Agency uh, is, uh, is handed order. this money. Could That's we... from the budget, page 186. Order, I don't think we should be seeking leave to table documents from the budget because uh, the budget is freely available for every uh, member. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, I'm leader of the Mr. Opposition. Speaker, I, I understand that in normal circumstances you would not seek leave to table something that is in the budget, but since the Minister is clearly unaware of that fact, I think it's pertinent to the order. debate. Order. I mean, it's just not reasonable to, to you know, waste the time of the House seeking to table documents that have been made available to the House just in the last few weeks. And uh, it doesn't impede the member's ability to use the bit from the budget. I'm sure he'll make sure the media has plenty of access to the page he's interested in. It doesn't need to be tabled in this House. It's already available to the House. Uh, does the Honourable Member have a supplementary Mr. Mr. The Speaker, why doesn't the Minister of Finance simply come clean and acknowledge that he, rather than Mrs Tehuhu, negotiated this deal, that it was done without the normal standards of transparency, accountability and due di diligence that should have occurred before he included that commitment to a specific untested agency in the budget. The Honourable Billings. Well, Mr Speaker, because that's simply not correct. And I'm not going to... No, wait, the, government, the government is not going to allow uh, party politics and conspiracy theories get in the way of using that money to help people. Clearly, clearly the Labor Party have given up caring about young Pacific Island youth who have no jobs and no skills. And they spent all last year, they spent all last year saying the government wasn't doing enough, and now they're saying we're doing too much. Order. Order. Order, I'm on my feet. Order, I allowed that exchange to carry on a while because both sides had made comments not particularly helpful, uh, but the noise level is just too high. Too high altogether. Supplementary to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, in addition to the witch hunt that has been launched to find out who leaked the report of the MPIA that hasn't been released, did his office at any time contact the Pacific radio station 531PI with regard to journalist Apiso Collins, who was suspended from that station for challenging the deal that he entered into with PETA? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, no, because we have been so busy working out how to help young Pacific Islanders with no jobs and no skills. We haven't lost 10 minutes on that kind of politicking. Supplementary question, Mr The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, was J.R. Pereira or anyone associated with the Pacific Economic Development Agency deal with whom he discussed this, uh, this deal, active in any way in the National Party election campaigns of 2005 and 2008. The Honourable Bill English. <laughs> well, well, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, I have no idea because I never met the man before about September, two, before about sometime in 2009. But I can tell you that when we, when, when we, when this government is dealing with the Pacific community, we know we are dealing with a community that overwhelmingly supports the Labor Party. So probably many of the people I have been speaking to were active in the Labor Party campaign in 2008. Point of order, Mr Point Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Have you finished, Jerry? Order. Well, Mr uh, Speaker, order. point of order. order. Different point of order. Order. Member is in seat for now. Order. Members will see the disorder that occurs when members don't uh, obey the rules. Uh, I apologise, Honourable Member. Point of order. A point of order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was a very specific uh, question. It could have been given a, a yes or no answer. Was, any, was J.P. Per Pereira or any individual associated with this deal also associated with the national campaigns of those years? Order. That question order. was not addressed or answered. Order. Order. The, I heard the minister clearly say he didn't know that he couldn't. <laughs> that he hadn't met this person until he said, I think, in his answer, September 2009. 
and he said he didn't know, and that, that is a perfectly fair answer. I mean, if the member wishes to challenge that in the future, that's fine, but that was the answer the member gave, the minister gave the House today.